In today's video, we will be designing the dream house for each of the 16 personalities. And so have you ever wondered what your dream house might look like? Well, let's find out that and more in today's video. This video also includes interviews with some of the 16 personalities so you can see how people in real life would describe their own place and how different personalities might prioritize different things in a house or apartment. Now, to bring the ideas in this video to life, I took the use of Midjourney AI. This house is just straight up beautiful. Who wouldn't want to live in a place like this? It is charming to the max. It is just a lot like my childhood home where I grew up with the white house and the similar style roof and a porch and a garden. Of course, that garden has had a lot of love put into it. Our garden was just kind of a mess all the time, but that's how it is in the real world, right? I see how this kind of a house would inspire an ISFJ to calmness, serenity, to relaxation, to peace, and to a positive, easy-going life. In this home, I see something very practical, and I see something very sleek and Scandinavian in the style. I see very clean lines, I see something modern, and I see something very practical. And here I see something an ISTJ might really come to like, a place where they can, where everything works, and where everything is modern, where everything is set to be efficient and effective, but also at the same time a place where you can Really just relax, take it easy, find peace of mind, but also just a place to show off the hard work that you put into life and all the effort that you've taken into things that you do to make things clean, to make things organized, to make things work. This is a testament to what you can achieve. What I see here is something that demonstrates status and power, something that stands out Something that uh, really makes an impression. And I see here something that speaks to the ESTJ personality types, nature. Something that represents your ambition and drive and hard work and effort. But also at the same time, something that's clean, modern, functional. Something that is appealing and something where you can really, something you can really take pride in. Now here, what we see is perhaps the dream place of an ISFP personality type. Look how serene, relaxing, and natural it all is. Look at the nature and look at the old-fashioned style of this place. It is a place with warmth and what looks like a campfire inside and a fireplace, I guess is the right word. And a place where you can engage in your interests, be it art, be it music, be it just life in general and enjoyment, right? And now INFPs only seem to have taken that one step further. And while I'm sure many INFPs would think this is a bit too much, I think many like the fantasy-esque style of this. This seems like something straight out of the Lord of the Rings. This looks like the Shire, right? The green roofs and places like this, I think, is something you can only find in a place like, for example, the Netherlands or New Zealand. I think uh, the open windows are perhaps a bit too open for an INFP who might prefer a bit more privacy. At the same time, I see uh, wooden, cultivated and ornate house, a place that shows off detail, a place that shows off personality and a place that you can rest in, relax and let your imagination roam wild in. It would be uh, with a lot of natural light and um, with big spaces, but with an interior very warm with wood, uh, crystal, I don't know, natural colors. Uh, I'm not very into cooking, but I would love to, to read, uh, just relax. Yeah, an open library with a lot of uh, books uh, just to, to look at them um, working in. So yeah, very uh, open spaces and, and quick to your eyes. Do you mind a bit of clutter or do you prefer to be more clean and organized? Or Yeah. Organized, but not a lot of minimal because uh, for me it's not that warm enough. So it would be uh, with a lot of stuff, but very organized, but uh, not too much white and not too much minimalism. Now it's the start of the new year of 2024 and 
The question on everyone's minds is, should I set a New Year's goal? What should I do to achieve my goals? And what is it I want to do and experience this year, right? And if you're wondering about those things, I have a new workshop on the 2nd of February at 7 p.m. GMT plus one Amsterdam or rather Barcelona time. You can come together with other MBTI nerds and other people interested in personality psychology to discuss and to draw up your own tree of life, to reflect on what you need this year, what you want to develop, what you want to grow, and how you want to live and improve your life for this year. This workshop can be a great opportunity for you to become more aware of your needs and to make sure that you prioritize the right things that really contribute and add to your personality. In this house, I see something social, charming and inviting. A place of warmth, a place of nature, a place that allows all your friends and family members to come together to have a good time. I see here easy going colors that don't take too much space, while at the same time I see an ability to stand out and to strike yourself out and to show off color and personality in what you do. This is a beautiful garden and color palette for the ESFJ personality type. Okay, I'm not sure any real ESFP would actually like to live in such a place, but I see the strike out personality of an ESFP manifested in this house. So much color and also a place to have fun, a big pool, a place uh, that represents a beach style lifestyle and a lifestyle about pleasure and enjoying life and having a good time. The style of this house is also incredibly anti straight lines. Look how everything is round and angular. Look like this place hates and fights against order and actually makes a good case for some chaos when done right. Okay, this house I think is more cars than a house. It's more like a garage actually. And I think most likely this is not the ESTP personality type's dream house, but it does feature flair and luxury and open windows and something that makes an impression, but at the same time a lifestyle about action, doing and enjoying life. And of course your home should be a place for you as an extrovert to inspire you to action. A place that encourages your passions and interests and what you love to do about life. Of course, there is a limit, right? How would you describe your dream house? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, first of all, uh, it uh, must be com some, some comfortable with smart infrastructure. I, I, I think it must be uh, modern and simple design. Uh, like Scandinavian, I think. Now, the ISTP personnel type takes the garage to another level. And here we see an authentic vintage motorcycle and something that speaks to a uh, mechanic more than a regular person, I guess. At the same time, I know most likely no ISTP would really like to live in this place, but I think this place actually does symbolize the ability to tinker with things, the ability to work on things, the ability to be useful, to fix things, to make solve problems, and it inspires the mind of an ISTP in a really good way. Now, of course, an INTJ would like to live in a bunker, right? A place to plan out your world domination? No? Is that a stereotype, you say? Well. Anyways, I think at the same time, this place is sleek and modern with straight lines, a Scandinavian style or tweak to it, modernism, but also a place which inspires ambition, originality, and a place with its own unique design and style. INTJs don't like to follow the crowd or be like everyone else, and they don't necessarily strike themselves out as being lovers of color. And here we see something that stands out for what it is and for what it has it offer, not for the color or flair, but for its own unique style and efficient layouts and really, it's just something else, right? And if you couldn't get enough of fantasy with the INFP house, here's the INFJ Wizard's Tower. Yeah, hidden away in a forest somewhere we probably can't find on a map. This place is straight out of a dream, right? A place for your imagination, a place where you can have privacy and alone time, but also a place that represents something old and wise and deep, right? Something magical in its own nature. 
of course, I think in reality, most INFJs would probably not want to live in a tower. I mean, they're cold and honestly, even for an INFJ, probably a little bit lonely, right? At the same time, I think being able to sit up at the top and have your own reading nook and to be able to look out at the tower and look out at the world from above, I think that's something really, really tempting, right? At least for an Airbnb. And here in the INTP's house, we see something that looks a lot like an observatory, a place to look out at the stars, a place to think, a place to have amazing ideas, and a place to engage in scientific discovery, critical thinking, and also something that actually is efficient, but at the same time a bit rebellious, right? Here, there are no straight lines, it's all round, it's all curved, it's all unique in its own way, and a little bit rebellious at the same time, right? And I think... Well, perhaps even the INTPs would say this is a bit too avant-garde. I think there is something funny about this. I think there is something kind of cool about it. And maybe if you stay there a couple of nights, you'd even start to warm up to this place and say, hey, that's I could live here. Maybe? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, this house really surprises me. This house is a sustainable eco house. You see the solar panels on the top, you see the greeneries around, you see this is a place that embodies both nature and humanity in it, right? And this house, I think, perfectly represents the heart and soul of the modern ENFJ. Somebody passionate about the environment, about the community, about people, and somebody that wants to make a positive impact on the world, including living in a good way, right? And I think an ENFJ would want to feel like their home is a place that is good for the world and a place where they can be in and still feel like they've done something good for the world. And now for the ENTJ house, here's something that really represents ambition. Here's something really imposing. I think this is what you'd find if you Google Jeff Bezos house. Yeah, it is something that represents hard work and effort and something that you really put your soul into creating. Honestly, imagine being a FedEx driver coming in here and having to deliver a parcel and walking through that gate and being like, uh, <laughs> am I in the right place? <laughs> yeah, this is honestly more like a castle than a house. Okay, so first of all, what are we even looking at here? This looks more like a spaceship than an actual house. At the same time, it looks incredible and it definitely conceptualizes the far-reaching, big-picture thinking of the ENTP personality type. It's a beautiful, inspiring concept for a place, but of course you have to think, how do I make that happen in the real world today with my resources and where I am? And how do I make sure my space is inspiring, creative, and fun for me, while also featuring tech and things that inspire my mind and help me think bigger? Okay, for ENFPs, first of all, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry for what I'm about to show you. This is the Rainbow Sprinkler Paradise, the ENFP dream house. Okay, so the only thing missing in this picture is unicorns. This is straight out of the AI world of stereotypes. And I don't know, ultimately, I think, you know, while many ENFPs would be like, oh, that's such a stereotype and most ENFPs aren't like that. At the same time, I think if you take a second look at it, you'd be like, hmm, kind of looks kind of nice. Actually, I kind of would like to live there, but I don't, I'm not going to tell anyone. Um, I think it's, um, I always see a, like a big space full of kids, actually. Hmm. Um, so it's like more of a, let's say, um, a human um, feature rather than a um, material feature, uh -huh. a house, a home, and then yeah, well, of course, like if interior-wise, I think it's uh, something with like really large windows, lots of wood, lots of glass, maybe some stone. Then with lots of kids, I assume you want a playground or a nice garden or something. Yeah, actually, garden no. I think it's like there's too much overhead mm -hmm. <laughs> for uh, for keeping the garden alive. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want the garden, but yeah, uh, a, a big yard where you can actually, yeah, just chill with the kids, put a swimming pool on. Also, I, I'm, I'm fond of um, all this like mechanical th things. So like, you know, little uh, electric, electric cars that my ki kids could, drown, uh, could drive around, uh, all this kind of fun, childish stuff that I want to do with them. Now, if you're looking for some genuine design and architecture inspiration for your house, my tips are for feeling types, 
don't be afraid to invest in a bit of spirituality and dreamliness, right? Having places to dream, to meditate, to engage in mindful reflection, to be aware of your emotions, to uh, engage in meditation, that's not wrong. And even in today's world, spirituality can be something really rewarding and really enriching in your life. So why not have an astrology section just for the fun of it? Why not have some colorful rocks? Why not have a Buddha statue if you think that could be a bit curious or a bit mysterious? These things add some warmth and personality to a place, and also they're a way to channel your own mind and imagination in a positive direction. For thinkers, consider making your place, your home, a maker space, a place to gadget, thinker, to work on tools, to make things smart. Consider smart homes, consider uh, creative spaces where you can engage in development of new things, to make uh, your own things, to have your own printer, to have your own sewing machine, to have the ability to make your own things at home. Isn't that a really appealing thought? For those that are a bit more sensing in their personality, why not consider prioritizing your body and pleasure and physical needs, right? So why not consider things like a pool or a home gym or a dance corner or a place to engage in karaoke or sing-alongs, a place to do things, a place to, of action, a place of having fun, something that really brings you out into the world and something that allows you to use your body and your voice and your personality to its fullest capabilities. And for the intuitives, why not have a dream nook in your home, a place to read and think, a place to daydream, a place to conceptualize ideas, a vision board, an area where you can add post-its to put together plans and to put things in motion, a place to write down to-do lists or a fun way to channel and stimulate your mind at home. And for the extroverted types, consider ways to get action into your home, games and board games and things that invite social interaction, a social space with couches, a place for people to come together, a table with bar chairs or something where people can talk and have fun and connect with each other. Consider things that make your place a place for people to come and to hang out whenever they feel like and whenever you feel like. For the perceiving types, don't be afraid to sometimes fight against modern sleek lines and order and organization. There are ways to break free and to be creative and to add color and to add plants and to add chaos into the world without being too much and without adding or being too cluttery. Yeah, uh, perceiving type can contribute more round lives, more lives, and can make a place feel more lived in, right? What's worse than coming into a place where it feels like people don't live, where people don't do things, where people just have everything organized, but where ultimately nobody is free to break free? And for the introverts... Don't be afraid to invest in a place that gives you calm, a place that, where you can be serene, a place where you can have coffee in the morning, look out the window, a place with a garden, a place where you can sit down, a place where you can rest and unwind, or your own cave or personal space where you can be when you want to be alone. Finally, for the judging types, consider ways to declutter your place and to keep things clean. Find ways to make sure you don't have too much stuff. Make sure that your place only has the essentials, what you really, really need, and that you have organization and structure in what you do and how you live. It will do wonders for your stress levels. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you like videos like this. This is a new concept for me. And if you found it fun, I found it fun. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.